In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a frozen scene with salt. The problem with using real ice in photo shoots is that they melt. So instead, I'm going to make some clear crystal with salt and glass from a picture frame. First thing you need is hot water. I put a third cup of water in the microwave, but you can also boil it. That's actually plenty for the surface that I'm covering. Next, add one third cup of Epsom salt and stir it until it completely dissolves. Once you see that all the salt has dissolved into the hot water, prepare your glass surface, which in this case is the glass from an IKEA picture frame. The next step I picked up from Kids Fun Science. Smear some water with a few drops of dishwashing liquid in it over the surface of the glass so that the salt solution moves around more. Be very careful. The edges of the glass are really sharp and you can nick yourself. One thing you should definitely do is have a paper towel underneath like I do to absorb any runoff. Next, add teaspoons of the Epsom salt water solution onto the glass surface. Let it dry for a few hours and you'll end up with something like this. I prepared this yesterday on glass from an 8x10 IKEA frame. This was much bigger than I needed for the shot, as you'll see later. It's thin, but it's got sharp edges, so be careful handling it. I've already got a light stand holding a rectangular LED panel over the table. I'm adding a blue filter that I'm holding up with these two wooden table place card holders. These place card holders are lightweight, so they're fine for keeping the filter upright, but you can use clamps. The light stand legs are visible through the filter, but that's okay. They won't be seen later. Here's what I'm going to use to hold up the glass pane a tabletop with a reflector holder for my portrait studio. I have it, so I'm using it, but what you really need is just some kind of sturdy clamp. Don't rush out to buy this particular thing because I'm sure there's something better for the job. The important thing is that the clamp has some rubber so that you can grip the glass well and not scratch it up. Slide the glass into the clamp, trying to keep it vertical and not slanted in any way. Next, get your toy ready. I'm using a Lego caveman that I fossilized by swapping out the hands and head with the skeletons. I don't want him just standing on the ground, so I've set him up on a wire that I've hot glued a Lego stud to on one end. To keep him elevated, I'm using these helping hands. This is kind of bulky and can sometimes get in the way, but this is much easier than coiling up the wire for a base and then photoshopping all of that out. Look for a clear spot in the glass where you can put your toy. Next, I'm going to add some brick-built walls of ice to frame the photo better. I'm just going to leave them like that for now and fine-tune later when I'm behind the camera. And then I'm going to pour some Epsom salt from the bag all over the ground here between those icy walls. Next, I'm going to turn on the overhead LED light here on the light stand behind everything. And now I'm going to bring in this closet light that you probably saw me using in the behind the scenes about creating an underwater scene with Orbeez. The LED is cheap, but it's also bicolor. I've got warm and cool as well as dimming control. I'm just going to wave the wand here behind the blue filter to get the lighting effect that I want. Okay, I think I have it set up more or less how I want, so it's time to shoot. I've got a vintage manual macro lens on this A6000, so I'm going to use the magnifier and focus peaking feature to make sure I've got focus. So I've shot a bit and changed things up in the scene and the settings until I got something I liked. As you can see, I added a penguin just for some humor and stood the closet light LED on its end directly behind the caveman for some really dramatic lighting. Right away, I can see that the light is totally blown out. Hit O to see the clipping warnings in red. To fix that, 
I'm going to grab the radial filter and draw a circle around that area. Then I'm just going to pull down the exposure until the red disappears. I want to bring some more detail back to the crystal there, so I'm going to slide the highlight slider to the left. I don't want the exposure in the highlights dropped on the face though, so I'm going to hit the range mask and choose luminous. Let me just turn on the overlay so we can see how this works. I'm going to pull up from the left, which represents the darker part of the image. It's only affecting this and not this now. Okay, next I want to change the temperature of the scene and get rid of this yellowish cast on these ice walls, so I'm just going to drag the dropper and click. I'm not really happy with how blue that filter is, so I'm going to adjust the hue to make it just a touch more aqua. And now I want to create more of an idea that this is a cavern, so I'm just going to add a pretty strong vignette. The next thing I want to do is emphasize the face a bit more. So I'm going to drag a small radial adjustment over that part. I'm going to bring up exposure. And shadows, oop, back that down, there. Next, I want to increase the texture because the salt crystals are a compelling part of this image. And because this is supposed to be a cold place, I'm going to add some haze by dragging the haze control to the left. And like with the underwater shot I did, I want the saturation down a touch. Okay, something's not right with that face. It's too washed out. So I'm going to go back into that radial adjustment and use the range mask tool again. There. Okay, here's the before and after. I'm just going to go a little bit further with a vignette. And we're done! Making salt crystals is super simple to do, and they add a cool effect to toy photography. They also make a great macro subject on their own. If you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment. And if you want to see more behind the scenes in toy photography tutorials, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching!